with the leading group and uh, seem to be trotting along at about the same rate of knots as the main pack at the moment, waiting for yet another time check to come in. The sun really beating down these riders and forecast is it's going to get hotter and hotter and hotter. The uh, sprint we saw down the road at SoCap was the last we're going to get before we had the final sprint in Bordeaux and that was run by Morils from Van Lanka and here we are now then hello De Klerk have I, have I got it wrong? Oh, yes, I have. David, you've got it wrong. It was de Klerk, not Morels that went away. He was in the earlier break, reading it all wrong, sackcloth and ashes. So de Klerk from Hameling. In fact, de Klerk was the one that got the uh, um, early uh, break, early sprint. Let's have a look at that one. It's gone. Ah, here we are. They're going back to where we started from. It was de Klerk, Hameling, and Laurent, correct? De Klerk, Hameling, and Laurent, correct? And uh, the second sprint, Abdu Jafarov and Muzio. Well, we got the Abdu one, we heard that one come out. Muzio from uh, Jalabert. And let's get confirmation of the third one then. Any minute now, coming up on the screen. Keep your fingers crossed. Nope, they're not going to show us this one. Nice line in haircuts to Vries has got. He hasn't had that done just like that for the Tour de France. He normally has his hair like that. As my sergeant made in the army used to say, let's see the bone. <laughs> you have to so, right, so cut so sharp at the back you can see the bone, as he used to put it. And uh, Now, I'm going to have to sort of keep my eyes down in this little lot because on the earlier radio check, and I didn't actually check numbers when they came through, they gave us Sammy Morils as being away in that leading group. But De Klerk got the first uh, of the sprints, and uh, so let's wait. In fact, I'm sure it's sunny in there, but um, we'll, you back at home can have an egg-on-face competition and have uh, a competition. I need to see how many mistakes I make today. Oh, that's the problem here. We've uh, got lots of bits of paper in the air, and uh, Teddy Bouillon for Casaraba leading this little group. Again, a mixture of uh, riders from different teams. And I think they've resigned themselves now. The fact they're not going to catch that little lot because that, that sprint at Soka was, in fact, with 34.5 kilometres to go to the, the finish of the race today. So we're well inside the, the 20 miles to go. And that is my buys for any chance of the sprinters par extraordinaire to get the stage victory today. Uh, Bordeaux has seen some tremendous sprints in its time. In fact, it has been really known as a sprinter's paradise. And uh, people like Delagarde have won here, Plankart's won here, uh, Basso. If you look back down the list, you'll get some good wins like Merckx and so on, and Carstens, but of course, Barry Hoban winning in 69 and 1975, as far as Britain's concerned. And the last time we came to Bordeaux was in 1990, when Bunyo won the stage. The year before that, it was De Vilda, another sprinter. Uh, Van Poppel in 1988. No, nope. uh, so he doesn't look too happy, does he? I think there'll be some one, two words said by the team managers later on that uh, they've allowed a bit too big a gap to go. But, but nevertheless, all the people that are really in contention and all those have been tipped for being in there with the top uh, honours of winning this race when we hit Paris are still together because apart from the Varank who's in the midst of this pack in the yellow jersey, uh, Indrain, Bunyo, Alcala, Kipucci, uh, Motte, Broeking, Le Monde, uh, Roche, uh, they're all in this little pack at the moment. So they're still together, allowing some of the lesser lights to have an opportunity of collecting some of the awards. They don't do it deliberately, but uh, at the moment, the riders, I think, having missed that one, and uh, they don't feel, I think, too energetic to pull them back because of that team time trial tomorrow. There'll be a lot at stake because it's a long time team time trial and coordination of the riders. There, Dominic Arno, uh, who is uh, at the moment in fourth place overall. Arno just working his way back into the uh, group. Took the stage San Sebastian, San Sebastian when he won that one, just ahead of Mazzeo when Zilla took the jersey. Oops, somebody pulled the chain off, I think, or then a bit of a problem. What's the problem? And that puncture, back tyre. Here we are, it'll uh, be light relief for our cameraman to wait while he comes up to get a replacement wheel bouncing along on the rim. Doesn't do much good, I can tell you, nor the tyre. In fact, um, there we are, there he goes, off, the car's come, out goes the quick release mechanism, in goes the rear wheel. Normally the rider gets off, knocks it out and holds it up, but I think he decided this time he let the mechanic do the work. A bit of a push to get him back in again. That's where the clipless pedals come in, Jolly. You're still going to bang your feet down on the pedals and click, and in you go. Uh, not favouring to use the old toe clips and straps, but still he's having a bit of trouble just getting his feet in, but he's in there now. And off we go. 
exactly that light saddle. They're making these saddles so light now, those uh, under rails that support the saddle, they're making them titanium nowadays, makes a very expensive saddle, but also a, a light one. And here we go. It makes use of the cars, they go whizzing by. A Maya car going through. They must be extremely pleased with the Rochialdi's success yesterday in winning that stage. And so was uh, Mochialdi, absolutely elated by it. He's not allowed to tuck in behind the cars, by the way, but uh, there are so many vehicles coming through. Normally, unless the speed goes up like it is now, the draft of the cars, even if well away from them, helps you a little bit. You're not allowed to tuck straight in and get a tow back up again. And, of course, modern cars don't have door handles on. In the old days, you know the old-fashioned door handles on cars. Well, you know, if they drift you very close to you, you can put your hand out and get a little kick tow and find yourself towed back up again, which is all terribly illegal. And uh, the, the commissaire is always watching out for things like that. And they will be at the back there. They've got lots of commissaires on motorbikes, just making sure that the riders behave themselves and don't take toes or get assistance to get back. A bit of a disappointment when you puncture. And uh, if a star rider punctures, then the rest of the team will drop back. But in that occasion, they weren't too bothered. And the pace isn't too uh, hot, and I think he could well get back again and uh, aid. Uh, his team, if necessary, because they've got one man in the break uh, of career. So, another break coming up for us. No break for the riders, some way to go yet. And as you join us, the blackboard is up, showing these riders that the gap is indecipherable as far as we're concerned from our commentary point. You probably saw it better than I did. We don't get a good picture sometimes on our monitors. And nevertheless, it's uh, enough to say I think they're going to get to the finish and sprint out amongst this little lot here. Pascalino's still on the back uh, of this group. And uh, licking his lips, I think, at the thought of taking over that yellow jersey. There we are. Ninth at five minutes and six seconds behind his uh, teammate, Veronk. Veronk, who rode very well in the Kellogg's Pro Tour last year, if memory serves me correctly, who's got the yellow jersey. So these young riders beginning to have a little bit of a flurry, uh, but the strong hard men will come through, I'm sure, towards the back end of the second week. Riding a stage race like this, you know, I mean, they are in the saddle yesterday, the winning time, six hours and 41 minutes. So they made six hours and 41 minutes in the, in the saddle yesterday. And so day after day, riding... Anywhere around about uh, five and a half to six and a half hours, day after day. We have got the rest day, just one rest day for them at Dole, but nevertheless, it's a long, old way, nearly 4,000 kilometres of riding a bike, and you've got to watch out for things like saddle sores, tiredness, eating the right food. And the younger riders very often don't have either the stamina nor the judgment uh, to know when to really push themselves and when to follow wheels and hang back. So it's good to see the young riders now beginning to uh, have a little go, and uh, so there we are. I'm now going to check this one to make sure I've got it right. 173. It is Sammy Morils, right? So, in fact, my flash when I looked up there at the screen was, in fact, the first of the sprints of the day when De Klerk got it. And it was Morils that got the last of the sprints of the day. So that's a little sandwich as far as the Lotto team are concerned. The... Um just checking down here at the results of the King of the Mountains, the uh, Côte de Moni after 45 kilometres, Chiapucci took that one, after the Côte de saint Sever after 60 kilometres, Chiapucci took that one, and the sprint at the Mont de Marsan after 81 kilometres went to none other than the bold Abdul Japarov. And of course, the field were all together then at the 80-odd kilometre mark, so that gave Abdul Japarov a chance to pick up some, uh, some points. But uh, nevertheless, the little group that have gone away from him now have taken away from us the chance of watching the big sprinter. Everybody's been waiting for the confrontation between Cipollini and Abdul Jafarov in the Tour this year, and so far we've been disappointed. They've been uh, seen off in no uncertain fashion by the, the hills so far, and now on the day when they could have actually started to entertain us with their version of Mike Tyson in full flight, uh, they're stuck in the main pack and we're not going to see them sprint for it. Well... TBM coming up here, must be pleased, that's the team car in the background there. All the cars supplied by Fiat, so we don't see the normal team colours on the cars. They have standard uh, logos put on the team cars, standard amount of sponsors. Whoops, it's beginning to break up, one or two people uh, trying it out to see what the strength is. We're getting down towards the finish in Bordeaux, and I think they want to, to, to suss out who's got some strength left in his legs. The TBM director sportive, Case Prame, uh, one of the TI Rally team riders some years ago, also a useful man when it came to winning stages in races. All of them under the watchful eye in the old days of Peter Poss, who seems to have 
been such a good team manager. Everybody used to complain about it that from his uh, ranks of rides have come some of the best managers in the business. Jan Raas rode for him, uh, Henny Kuiper rode for him. So um, he's got quite a lot. Because Walter Pankard is on the road, the team manager, as far as Panasonic is concerned, in this race. But Peter's going to pop up from time to time and keep an eye on things. You can't keep him out of action as he is the, the main number one man. But he leaves Walter to do most of the driving uh, of the race and just pops up from time to time to make sure all is going according to plan. There we are. And Simon, very famous family, the Simons, with uh, tremendous amount of success. Probably one of the successful cycling families uh, in Europe in recent years. And, uh, oh, hello. Yes, very good. <laughs> Wait till we get back up there. Let's do a quick look at the uh, doctor's car. And uh, oh, all hands to the plough. This is it. Right, somebody's got the whip out. The word's gone round. OK, lads, we've got to, to get cracking now. And uh, Buckler it is. Sorry, it, uh, uh, Vanesto it is who finally have decided to try and recruit the Casaramas again. Well, this is very, very interesting because there's that, that overhang of tomorrow's team time trial that's certainly just, I think, taking the bite off some of the work that's being done here. And uh, they've got a nice bit of a pace going up. I think it's been the team manager who had to uh, get the riders out of their lethargy today. And so there's Martin Early going through. Let's have a look where Martin is. He rides the PDM. You saw him with that upturned Poe on his head, at least I call him that. The great big crash hats. It makes it very difficult sometimes to pick up the right. Indoran, you can always pick Indoran. See that little uh, white cap he's got with the peak down across the front? Uh, I, I remember helping a good friend of mine, Annette, when she said, look at this uh, uh, video. I want to try and pick out Indoran. And I think that's him. Uh, and I said, look, if you're looking for uh, Indoran, look for a man wearing a, a white uh, racing cap with the peak pulled down. He's pretty well always got his, his cap on. Of course, he pulls it rain and things like that, it, it changes. But nevertheless, he rides with his uh, racing cap with a peak down over the front of his uh, racing glasses. So you can always have a little look down there. That's always been the concern amongst the uh, commentators, the way in which the riders uh, have been wearing crash hats and hiding some of the most uh, easy features to pick up. You can certainly see there that uh, that is a very smart haircut, then, as far as the, the young rider Kelly de Vries is concerned. And we can pick him up from his haircut anyway. Put in basin number nine. Reg Van Lanker going through on the far side. Uh, then Alan Piper. So we've got a mixed bag here of Italians, French, uh, Australian. Um, the Dutch in good numbers too. And there we are. Oh, you can feel it, can't you? He's up out of the saddle for Jérôme Simon. And uh, this is the leading group then, still well ahead of the main pack. I think the sprint will come from these. Do come back to us after this break to find out. To 10 minutes and 20 seconds, so they've been trying to preserve some sort of semblance of speed in the main pack and just hold it at 10.20 now. But um, I think that all is lost because here we are back with the, the peloton. The world would have gone back to them again, 10.20. That was the time that was on that blackboard. And the rider on the front, Martin Early, stage winner. We just come from Poe, by the way, to uh, Bordeaux. And Martin won a stage into Poe about three years ago in the Tour de France. He's won a stage in the Tour of Italy and the Tour de France. Wasn't quite certain he was going to ride for the PDM uh, team this year in the Tour. But they've selected him and he's in there. And it's his job now to keep his team in contention, in particular uh, Eric Breuking, who at the moment for PDM is lying 8th overall, 5 minutes, 6 seconds down on general classification. So they've been sent out with the whip to aid the chase, and uh, Gatorade also have decided to send a man up as well. Here we are, back up with the leaders at the moment, and uh, Massimo Girotto from the Carrera team. Not contributing much to this one, he's the Old man in the race, he's letting, I think, some of the youngsters have a go at this one right now. And uh, he, in fact, is 32 years of age, so, so 31 years of age, a very seasoned competitor indeed. Turn to 30, 
two in June of this year. So we've got a combination of experience and youth in this break and a combination of several teams that will benefit from this one and Alan Piper from Tulip. Question mark hanging over, hanging over Tulip's continued um, sponsorship next year but the sort of publicity they're beginning to get now from the team, quite useful. And Alan, I think, will be wetting his lips for this one. Got a very useful turn of speed when it comes to a sprint, Alan. Uh, but the, all these riders now, they've got to keep the pace up uh, but they don't want to sap their strength when it comes to sprinting. And uh, Alan, well, I don't know, we're going to try and decide which is the best likely sprinter out of this little bunch because uh, all their job normally isn't to be seen at the end of a finish, sprinting it out. As young uh, Kakaon going back then, he, in fact, is best known as um, a useful little climber. So he's found himself in this one when he's best uh, as a climber. And he's only his third year as a professional rider. Another useful climber here, uh, Eric Van Lanker and Alan Piper, probably the, the best all-rounder of this little bunch and very experienced indeed. So good luck to Alan. I know he was kicking himself last year, sitting here commentating rather than being out in the race. And uh, he was telling me uh, that, in fact, uh, when Yates retires, he said he, he would give this one out. He said, uh, Yates says when he's going to retire, he had to warn the people back in England, he's going to back to ride uh, not only 10 mile, 25 mile time trials when he gets his amateur license back, but he's going to ride a 24 hour race. So, uh, any support of the 24 hour brigade, the thought of Yates bombing round riding the 24, that says something. He's going to buy a yacht or something and live down the south coast and ride his motorbike and ride a 24 hour. There we are, 133 to Reese um, going through. And. Uh, so we're going to take a short little break then while he still pumps away at the front, one of the three Buckler riders in this breakaway group at the moment. The man who's likely to benefit most by this uh, breakaway group uh, still some ten minutes ahead of the field and they begin to warm this one up. I think that uh, oh, Girotto is just set, is sensing out that he better try and see how strong these riders are. We're going to see a lot of this running in towards the finish, jumping going on. Uh, and I would have thought, I wonder what Buckler's going to do. With three men in here, they can actually try the old one too. Two men lay back and the other one go down the other side. And, uh, but of course the trouble is they've got a combination of, of young riders, Buckler, because Martin uh, coca is only 22 years of age, so he's a newcomer when it comes to these sort of tactics. And also in there at the moment, Khaled de Vries, he's been a pro since uh, 1989, so he's, uh, what, 25 years of age. But the, the, probably the man who's got the understanding of this, like, Noel Sagers has been a pro since 1982 is in this break. He's the one who started it all. I thought that Sagers is going to be, as far as Buckler's concerned, the man who's going to try and mastermind the old one-two from their team. Because I, I've got a suspicion... Ah, uh, see, Piper's going way! That's a good move by Alan. He's off. This is how I saw him when he went and took a stage in the uh, Tour of Britain, the old Kellogg's Tour about uh, three, four years ago when we finished in, uh, in Newcastle. He took off like a great race of knots towards the end. He's got that ability to stretch legs and he's decided to try and on this little rise here to really sort them out and uh, as a good move by Alan but oops there we go now then uh, in fact there's a little sprint he's gone under there and uh well, he's picked up that one, he's, he caught everybody napping and uh, off he went and that was one then for, for Alan Ruff. he's in back he's gone again He's going again, second one, second attempt then for him to, uh, to go away. So, Alan Piper, the special PMU sprint, he got that one, he caught them all napping and away he went, but he's decided to let them all come at him again. Who's going to try it again? Nope, nope. Ah, the... Uh, Buckler team are leaving a back marker here and uh, I'm just wondering if they're going to keep one man on the back to pick out the action and probably warn the rest of them they've certainly got enough strength in the uh, in this break with three riders away and at the moment they've certainly put a guard on this train so there he is sitting at the back just to keep an eye on what's happening up in front. 
Well, the tactics going to be fascinating on the way in because, say, normally you can decide, well, you know, that is going to be the man that's got the best uh, opportunity. And as I thought I said earlier on that Noel Sagos was the one who got the most uh, experience, and he's sitting at the back, so he's been elected by Buckley. There we are, Kirato, he's going. He's a pretty quick man too. Sagos is going with him. So Sagos at the moment is probably, I should think, going to be the one that will roll up and down this, this bunch to just keep an eye on the flyers and go up with the flyers to um, perhaps pull back the flyers or will he try and stay with him? That was intriguing. Let's watch what happens. So he's gone off with Kirato, the uh, Italian. And we're back with the, the chasing group. Well, I think this is academic now, and uh, I hope we can spend a lot of time up with that leading pack because they're going, that little group at the front, those ten men, to be trying it on all the time. And uh, from watching on the cameras, we hope we can begin to look at who's the strongest and who's got the most tactical sense on when to go. And it's a long sprint, by the way, into, uh, into the finish at Bordeaux. And you can actually see him from a long way out, so it's not one of those little tricky town turns that we get sometimes where you weave in and out and around and about so that uh, you can, when you get into the town, slip people. It's a long straight run in towards the finish. And the uh, this big bunch here, pulling them back bit by bit, 20 kilometres to go. Well, they're cutting the gap down somewhat, but I think they've left it far too late for this run into uh, Bordeaux. And what's the gap now? 9.40. Well, if they chipped a uh, thick end of a minute off that one on the uh, from this leading group here. And gone back, yes, Sagers have gone to the back again. See him there, 137. Noel Sagers drifted to the back. Van Lanker's doing likewise. They're leaving some of the younger riders up in front, crafty so-and-sos. Uh, Garotto is still in there with the, the blue shorts for Carrera. Sagers has gone back again, here we are. So he is obviously the watchman and a and very strong rider indeed too. A lot of physical things. Look at the, his thighs there. He's got a, sorry ladies, he's got a you know, very strong, powerful rider. I think Pascalino won't be trying to stretch this one at all. He's got to keep that gap though at over five minutes uh, to take the yellow jersey into the, the finish. And Alan Piper dropping back. Well, I don't know. There he goes. Yes, he's going to sit on Sago's wheel. So they come into the finish uh, past the uh, Parc des Expositions. Uh, they're going over the, uh, the river and working their way in towards the finish. That's the uh, River Garonne. And at Bordeaux, of course, it's a very great port, the sixth largest port in uh, France, where they export most of the wine through that port. It's, it's the centre of the wine-growing region. Well, all quiet on the Western Front at the moment. They seem to have uh, eased back a bit now. That's when I hear then uh, Bunyo is in the main group. He's not going to do that today, but they've got to reduce that deficit. They'll swing round in towards the finish uh, up the Corjul uh, Ladumeg. Lad and uh, on that long straight, it's about an 800 metre straight at the moment. And I think that RMO might in fact want Lino. They're going to ask him to, to, to drive the thing on a bit. He can't do that really because Varenk, his teammate, is a technical leader. And here they are, this wonderful string, this big bunch of riders behind. What a great sight that is. This is the Tour de France. You know, the whole atmosphere, people have turned out, the sun is shining, lots of people on holiday, all the rest of not on holiday, but stop work and come out to watch the race. Here are they clapping the giants of the road. They know what these riders have got to do to cover nearly 4,000 kilometres in three weeks. But the sun beating down on them, they'll have crashes, they'll have punctures, they'll chase. You know, they'll have days when they've got saddle sore, they're days when their bones hurt, they've got cuts and bruises. And these crowd just come out to see the giants of the road go past them, this great colourful sight of professional bike riders who are here and they're one of the toughest sports in the world in the greatest race in the world the Tour de France there is the yellow jersey on the shoulders of Richard Varank of the RMO team but at the moment 
He looks like he could lose that one unless the gap comes down to less than uh, five minutes and six seconds. Little bonus at the finish of 20 uh, seconds for the first man across the line. I don't think that uh, Lino will be able to compete in that one. You, know, you, might, you might give him the slip. Uh, 9.40, the grap, so they're holding it at the moment. And that little clock we've got to watch uh, all the time. It's the five minutes and six seconds uh, with whatever bonus that uh, he might be able to get, Lino, in the, in the sprint, in the finish. There's one that we've got to watch out for. As I said, it's this long, straight stretch, about 800 metres up towards the, the finish. The finish uh, on the Parc des Expeditions, uh, and where they have uh, all the big Congress meetings as well. The velodrome is not far away. Lovely velodrome in uh, Bordeaux, where the... Uh, we are coming under the 10 kilometres. Just about six miles left now, as far as these riders are concerned. And the... It's so flat, you see, there's half the problems now, that there's not going to be anything like a decent uh, disruption, decent um, hill nothing, which will give them any, any opportunity of trying to jump. And the road's extremely wide as well. So it's going to take somebody with a lot of verve and a lot of speed to have any chance of uh, getting away from this group. And if they leave it to the finishing sprint, then I think we'll toss a coin for who's going to get it. Certainly Alan, I know, has got a, a fair old sprint. I'm getting a bit biased, I think. Sagas can also sprint. He's sitting at the back getting a jolly good toe off this one. And here, Carlato, well, he's got a fair turn of speed as well. Uh, you just don't win a stage in the Giro del Trento as he did last year and a stage in the Tour of Italy without being able to, to go quite quickly. Harmeling, whoops, sorry about losing the picture. Rob Harmeling, I think, uh, is a rider who would like to try and clop off and do a long one on his own, but um, he's just been giving, giving, or he's just receiving a certain uh, amount of um, instruction as to what the tactics are like. He's all right to sit in the motor car for the team manager telling you what to do, but out there you've got to uh, do it all for yourself. Well, Van Lanka, he's got a fair turn of speed too, and uh, I think somehow that we mustn't discredit him either as far as uh, the finishing sprint must uh, could be, because his track record over the years, Eric Van Lanka, you know, stage winner in the milk race, winner in the milk race, stage winners in the Paris-Nice, Tour of Italy, Tour of Switzerland, there he is there, going through now. I mean, last year, uh, in, in 1991, uh, a winner of the uh, Wing Canton Classic. Uh, Tour of Ireland, he got a fifth place overall. And he really is a very good sprinter. Uh, Amstel Gold, he just don't win that unless you're pretty quick as well. So he won that in 89. That's the chap in the red and yellow and blue jersey. Spotting one, two, three, four up there, Eric Van Lanker. And uh, he's now just on uh, 31 years of age. Comes from uh, Oudenaard in Belgium. And because the Belgians are brought up on commesses and sprinting, so there isn't a lot you could teach him, I suppose, about uh, how to go for the finish line. You just don't win stages in Italy, Switzerland, Paris, Milk Race, and the rest of it, and Tour of Belgium, uh, Tour of Holland, stage winner, all of those. So I think Van Lanken must be a threat for the, the victory here at Bordeaux and put his name on the roll call of honour and join such great riders who've sprinted the finish here in the past as Walter Godefruit, who is happy to be the team manager of the um, on the telecom team, got it to police on the front at the moment. Uh, Dalagard's won stages here as well. Case Prem, who is the team manager of TVM, by the way, he's won a stage here as well, so no wonder he's having a little chat to his man Harmeling about what to do, but I don't think he's quite got the speed of, uh, of Case Prem. And uh, Dalagard, who has got a, a, a shop in... Uh, in Biarritz, not far from here. I'm not sure exactly where he's come along to finish to watch this one, but Dalligard was the demon sprinter many years ago. Uh, so much so, the Parc de France once, he hit a man and actually killed him. Uh, somebody stepped out as he was thundering down the finishing straight and plowed him and cracked his skull open. Uh, these things happen when the riders are going at a great rate or not. So let's hope they have a very clear run in to the finish today. Uh, it's a very wide one, no touching of wheels, and let's see who's going to get this particular sprint today. Well, he's still doing the work on the front. He's, he's rolling this one along very nicely, uh, and they seem to have got him out there. Even Lino's moved forward as well, just to keep the pace up a little bit. 
So those are obviously tactics. Buck have got two men on the front. Ah, and there you see Carotto has, has decided that he's going to put himself in a position right near the front of this little lot. But of course, you can get surprised switching on the on the wider parts of the course when they get near the finishing straight. And they're still close towards... The, ah, look, Piper has spotted Sagers. Piper's sussed this one out, but uh, Sagers at the back is doing the job of masterminding the Buckler job, because the two young lads up in front, or semi-young lads, one's very young, one not so young, Sagers is being given the job, I think, of masterminding this one, and Piper thought, right, I'll go where the, where the brains are in the, in the uh, Buckler team and, and keep an eye on him. It's a long way back, though, Alan, from there, because you've got to watch as they accelerate away, because with 10 riders, and that's about, uh, what, six feet per bicycle, that's uh, sort of 60 feet from, from front to back, that takes some accelerating to get across this one. They're keeping station at the moment, and still letting this young lad do all the work. So he's been stuffed in as the, as the train driver. Uh, Herbert de Vries, one of the under-25 riders in this race. And they're keeping station at the moment. I think they've decided that they'll uh, drop back in that one. So there we are. He's still left on the front. Yeah, they, that's, that, those must be the instructions that come up for this young lad then. Well, I say, remember the World Championship team time trial with John Town, Rob Harmon and Tom Corr way back in 86. He's very good at sort of winding it up like this. Won the Grand Prix de Libération. Uh, in uh, 1991, he won a, a stage in the Etoile de Versailles in 1990, so he's no stranger to going over the line in first place. 1990 finished 67th in the uh, Tour de France, and uh, so he's got both skill, speed, and some strength in his legs, but he's obviously been sent out to keep the pace up and to give uh, his teammate Segers and uh, his other teammate uh, Martian uh, Kakokorn a bit of an easier ride. See, a little lad, I told you he's a good mountain climber then, 134, uh, Martian uh, Kakokorn. And look at the big size this fellow, Kirati. And Rob Harmeling, always an entrepreneur. Van Lanker, probably, this, probably the faster of this lot when it comes to longs. And little Sammy Marils, well, he can dap a few quick pedals in his time as well. Uh, Sega's so the back, and there still Alan Piper watching the action poise. Morils is, is uh, quite a, a, a quick little sprinter too, so mustn't discount him. He got that sprint just down the road, the, the special one. Nobody, I think, was really too bothered about chasing him as Piper gets out of the saddle. Looking around here. Still the same positions. Well, this really is a bit of a lottery. And... Uh, Still keeping the same positions. One thing they, they know now, of course, is the bunch certainly is going to catch them. The last time check 9.40, they're inside 10 kilometers ago, probably coming up to about the 8 kilometer board, I would have thought. There we go, they've got a banner up over the top, and let's see what we're at now. In fact, it's less than that, it's 5 kilometers. Doesn't time fly when you're having fun? So just 5 kilometers to go. That's about three miles, and they'll do this distance in something around about seven minutes, I suppose. So you haven't got much time to nip down the bookies and try and get your pin out and pick who's going to get this little lot, because um, it's still, I would have thought, between uh, Garotto, Morils, Van Lanka, and possibly Alan Piper. But um, Sammy Morils, a couple of wins last year at uh, Cholet and uh, Arrow Gippingen, and last year... In riding in the Wincanton Classic, he finished 48, so he's a good little rounder, but um, can he produce the sprint to catch this lot or napping? Well, they're still keeping station. There's Sammy Morils for Lotto in the centre, Sagers at the back, and uh, the man whose list of victories in the stages in such great races as Belgium and Switzerland and Holland and, of course, Britain. There he is. Eric Van Lanker for the Panasonic team. Now, still the same order. Somebody's got to jump. And who is the most courageous his lot to start and try and break the rhythm up? Sammy Marils, well. I think he's going to follow a wheel, Sammy, a little fella, and they don't have, usually have that sort of 
all that physical strength when it comes to sprinting. Mind that this long straight one like this would uh, suit a little rider to get on a wheel and come off it. Here's the big field behind. They're at 10 kilometres, so the, the first group have just got over the five. This is a lot gone under 10 kilometres, so that's uh, that's still well over six minutes, six, seven, perhaps eight minutes, I'd have thought. Get the old watch out. In fact, it'll be up on the screen, won't it? So he's putting his watch back down again. Uh, as to what the distance will be between this group. Uh, Lino, second from the front, going to benefit, could take that uh, yellow jersey. And let's look down the list of um, riders on the points classification. At the moment, on the King of the Mountains, Valenk is certainly getting that. That was confirmed whilst we were out there on the on the road. In the points competition at the moment, Valenk got 49, Mokhialdi 33, Indrain 32. Uh, so the points at the end of this one so as he's searching for all his, his things here we'll have to wait to see where well, we've got here 840 ah, I thought it would come down a bit when 5 and 5 so 840 and they're still pushing the pace up so this is a bit of a cliffhanger then uh, for these riders that uh, remember the gap is just between uh, Varank his teammate from the RMO wearing the yellow jersey and Pascal Lino is 5 minutes 6 mind you I suppose that RMO won't be overly concerned if um, uh, Lino doesn't get the yellow jersey. We've now got coming up to the four kilometres to go. I would have thought, sorry, three kilometres to go. I would have thought possibly that um, he should just about do it, but the, the way in which that bunch can really start to eat into the, uh, the time gap on a lovely straight run in like this, it might, it's going to be very, very much touch and go, but it could give RMO first and second on the general classification. Well, the only hill they're going to climb now is this uh, bridge. Just trying to get out of the saddle. Not enough, not steep enough or stiff enough for them to go. 8.30, they're out coming down, fractions all the time. But I can't see them taking three and a half minutes out in something like uh, 10 kilometers. 30 seconds a kilometre, and they're keeping up a sensible sort of pace here. So I, I think we're going to see a new yellow jersey. It's been changing every day so far. And... Uh, the riders do, by the way, on the yellow jersey, get a, a special bonus uh, every time they wear it, the yellow jersey for a day. There's a, there's a rent, as they call it, so you get, a, you get a, a lump of money every time you're out uh, wearing the jersey for a day. And so the RMO team will be happy with that one. And the winner of the stage today, when uh, it goes across the line, will be collecting uh, 50,000 French francs. That's 5,000 pounds in English money. Near enough, it makes no difference. Only two kilometres to go, still all together. This little train locked together. Nobody's on top of anybody so far. Uh, second, 20,000 French francs. Third, 10,000 French francs. And uh, that is the the prize waiting for the, the riders today. The overall prize in the Tour de France this year, 10,000, sorry, 10 million French francs, which works out at just over a million pounds worth of money to be spread amongst the riders. So he could be in there with a shout today to collect uh, the uh, special money, which will be given to the wearer of the yellow jersey. Imagine starting out today in the yellow jersey that uh, his teammate uh, Veronica also collected 2,500 <coughs> francs for wearing the, the, the green jersey for the day. He's got the uh, jersey of the best climber, so he got himself uh, some extra money for that as well. So he got quite a collection of cash uh, for the jersey he's wearing. Now then, still the same order. Let have a look here. No. Nope. Nobody's trying to break this one up. I think they're just going to wait for that, that sweep round the right-hander, and then all hell's that's going to let loose as uh, Jerome Simon still in there. Van Lanker's beginning to move up a little bit. Van Lanker's just beginning to move. Here we are, 1,000 kilometers. Now, down the road, there's a sharp right-hand turn, 800 metres. We'll all be able to see them from the finish. Pick your winners now. There we are, at the back, Piper. Beginning to go, and he whips on the out and tidy go. And he left Sagers on the right hand side. Good move, he's gone the longest way around. Sagers is the strongest man. Sagers has got to work his way through. He saw Lan and Lanka was also cooked in there. It's 800 metres. It's Piper going for it. And so Piper now heading, can see the finish down there. And a big push, Harmling tries to come through. Piper still switching across the, the course to try and get that man off his wheel. And still Piper a long way out there. Harmling's going after him as well. And so Alan Piper just quickly in the lead there. Looks like he's got it just ahead of uh, the 
the rider from, I think it's uh, not Kelly Tavis, it's the other one I think that's gone up there, yes, in fact it's Cockerkell and the young lad has gone up to him then, for Alan Piper, the veteran here, and coming up like an absolute rocket, Harmeling has gone for a long one, Piper suddenly realises he's got company, Cockerracker and goes as well, and still Harmeling is winding it up from a long way out, Harmeling has chosen to go, Piper perhaps he shot it too quickly, Harmeling still here, uh, thundering towards the line, Muriel's coming up very fast indeed, Piper's cooked, Harmeling's still going at it, what a long sprint these rather they've got Sammy Muriel's locking his head from side to side, but Harmeling's hanging on, he gets it from uh, Muriel's, and Girotto in third spot, well what a sprint that was, and Harmeling then, Case Prem, who won a stage here in uh, Bordeaux, will be elated with his uh, rider's performance then to come across the line and win that one, that was an absolute humding of a sprint, bad luck to Piper, who went so far out, they're going backwards here for the action replay, uh, but we're have, going to have to wait uh, for the big field to come in, something there, 20 seconds of a lap so far, all oh, the clock stopped running, <laughs> I didn't press my button either, so let's hope that the, oh it is, it started going again, catching up very quickly, and remember the, the time gap for the yellow jersey to go off the shoulders of a rank uh, towards the uh, uh, RMO rider, Lino in that gap, they've got five kilometres to go. Well, they ain't going to do that inside five minutes at the moment, so that's certainly the yellow jersey has changed over. To do a kilometre in uh, less than one minute is something even the track boys can't do. They're one, what, one five, one three, I suppose, on the kilometre. So there, they've got at least another uh, six minutes, I think five and a bit minutes to go, so the yellow jersey will now change shoulders again. We got it all yesterday when we were looking at the seconds for the second and third place, but the yellow jersey was home with a hat full of time yesterday um, so for Varank yesterday he got it very comfortably, it looks like Lino's got it again today so he won't be too happy for Rank to lose it but he's lost it to his teammate uh, who didn't contest that sprint, he just wound on in, in that main pack and TBM will be very pleased with that particular sprint uh, finish and uh, a success for them in stage victories but uh, Who's going to get the big bunch sprint? Well, I wonder if uh, Cipollini and Abdul Jafarov are going to bother to sprint for what 11th place it will be. And uh, here they are, the big pack behind. Uh, Cameron it seems to have gone and found himself another way along the dual carriageway. That's a different view, I can tell you. I've not seen one like that before. Now he's coming back into the line. Well, so, Harmeling, I think he deserves it, that lad. He's been... Oh, so many events that he goes off early in the race or third the way through and tries to get with a break and so often he gets caught, so often he gets fagged out uh, but there he was uh, doing just the right thing and getting it absolutely on the nail and that's a, a success which I'm sure he's going to save for a long time because winning a stage in the Tour de France, I suppose every bike rider's dream even just to take part in this great race but to actually win a stage as well is something that um, you can remember for many, many years to come. So. This group here, the fascination while we're hanging on and waiting is to see just what the time gap will be. And they're still working hard to try and reduce that time gap because everybody knows now that um, there could be a new uh, yellow jersey. There'll be no more time bonuses at stake when it comes for the, um, uh, the sprint, so there's nobody going to be split out of the, the places from about uh, uh, second or third downwards because they've, all the top bonuses now have gone out the front of this little group. Hugo Sal leading through for Zedder Bugno, who won when we were here a couple of years ago. He's not going to get it today. Bugno wearing the rainbow jersey of world champion. Luc Leblanc coming through. Hugo Sal looking back over his shoulder, still on home territory as far as he's concerned. Uh, Museo moving up for Lotto. Well, they didn't get the stay. They had Di Van der Poel, another useful sprinter. Well, his teammate from the Tulip team, uh, Alan Piper, didn't get that one. So. I'm not sure that uh, Adri can beat this little bunch, so when it comes, just three kilometres to go. So there we are, 3.39 down in the corner, and that uh, shows that the yellow jersey certainly will uh, move on then. And for Cipollini, who's won something like uh, 15 victories so far this year in stage victories or in straight-out victories, he's not going to have his name up there on the rostrum today and the wait this challenge we're waiting for between Abdul Jafarov and Cipollini is not going to happen. We thought this might be the day on the on the on the flat when they could have another go as they did in the Gent Bevergum, which ended up into being a, a fisticuffs rather than a, a cycle race. And uh, so they're not going to be batting it out this time for first place.
Duke of Assault. Hey, well, he's um, really got the front. He has got a fair turn of speed, but there's some big, very fast men in there. Ten gone so far. The On a stage like this, the points go down quite a bit in the uh, special jersey, the King of the, Ma the, the uh, Green Points jersey. As Bunio moves forward. And the a quick, look, a quick look down here of the stages. And they're going to get on the flat, uh, the stages, as follows. 35 points for first, then 30. So we've got, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 gone so far. So they're sprinting for no better than 15 points for the first man that comes through. Duco says, hey, leave me a bit of room to come through here. Don't want to get anybody upended. Lotto uh, moving up to get Museo in contention. Every point still helps uh, counts as far as the green jersey is concerned. So Museo wanting to uh, help himself to some more points here. Although at the moment, uh, the, the jersey for the green jersey for the, uh, the points overall is... Um, uh, clearly on the shoulders of Varenk with 49 points, Rocheald is 33, Indra with 32, Museo is lying back uh, just what Skibby's got himself for now, Museo's got to 28, so they'll try and get I think, as many points as they can do here, one kilometre to go. Uh, Sean Kelly uh, for, has got 22 points, so he's in contention as well, and of course Sean can climb the mountain, so this green jersey at the moment still in the balance, that's why this big main field are going to try and get some of their sprinters into top spot to see who can uh, win this one. Uh, from the, bench, the bunch sprint. Still a lot of points and they're going, this is where Alan decided to go in a long one. He took off just before he went to that corner. You can see how long it is now, 800 metres up this finishing straight and the um, time at 6.29 so that certainly has lifted up uh, the Lino has got the jersey but who's going to get the sprint from the bunch hidden behind the flags there still a oh, nice lead out for Museo as his team lead out moves over and Adri van der Poel this on the far side they're going leaving Museo to go over Adri van der Poel is on his wheel van der Poel is trying to get hold of Museo at the moment and van der Aden on the far side van der Aden's going for it hammer and tongs now and still on the left hand side Museo looks like he's got enough strength to hang on the one Museo's just on the front of this one he forces uh, uh, over to one side but uh, so van der Poel couldn't get through Ludwig came up on the far side there and I think it was Museo just ahead of Adri van der Poel left with uh, Ludwig on the right hand side we'll wait for confirmation of that one but the sprinters there the big hitters uh, Kip Chipolin there's Chipolin just drifting in now on the right hand side with the unusual glasses on and uh, can't see oh there's Sean Yates coming in the red white and blue jersey on the left hand side of your screen just crossing over now the other side so he's rolled on in with the rest of the uh, main peloton and uh, that would seem to be most of the 195 riders in. Here we go again. Van der Aden, the right, didn't quite get it. Jalabé in the pink is going way over to the right. I think uh, then, in fact, oh, in fact, it's Peters on the left-hand side. That's right, Peters, because, uh, in fact, it looks as Van der Poel faded slightly. And Peters on the left-hand side. One green jersey went one way, one went the other. And it's Peter Peters that was contesting it with Moseo. But certainly Moseo taking the bunch sprint, and that um, will help him with some points towards getting the green jersey. And um, Cipollini and Abdi Jaffros must wait another day. So there we are then. The uh, presentation shortly of the jerseys. And uh, Rob Harmoning up on the rostrum. Winner of the stage here in De Bordeaux. This is the 73rd time we've been here and uh, adding his name to an illustrious list of winners over the years. A real roll call of honour in Bordeaux. Big, tall fellow and he was able to have the strength in his legs to win at that stage. And here we go, just showing how he views his tremendous power down that finishing straight, Sammy Morel's just behind him, and then Massimo Garotto into third straight. Oh, the effort there taking Harmling over the line. So that gave him the victory, and uh, we're not going to see the presentation of the yellow jersey, I don't think at the moment. Just let me say then that uh, that's the result there, and Pascolino takes the yellow jersey. There we are, and uh, Lino at the bottom uh, in fourth spot uh, will take that yellow jersey. Five hours, 45 minutes of riding, 
Uh, and yes, we are seeing. Thank goodness for that. I thought we were coming to the end of the programme. We weren't going to see him, but there we are. We've got the yellow jersey. Change over as far as our armour is concerned from uh, Richard Varank to yet another up and coming young rider. And here is Pascal Lino taking that mix. He looks <laughs> as if he can't believe it. Well, some compensation for the, the break he went away in, in the run into San Sebastian when he got swallowed up in the main pack. But there he is now up on the rostrum as the uh, yellow jersey. New yellow jersey then for this 1992 Tour de France. Still stays with the RMO team. Goes on the shoulders of Pascolino, this 26-year-old rider, uh, turned pro way back in 1989, and this in his fourth year as a pro has given him one of the great successes of his career. So myself, David Duffield, and the Eurosport Tour de France crew, time to say bye-bye. Climb up there into the top.